state statute that addresses official meetings. In part, it states a person who willfully interrupts, disturbs, or disrupts an official meeting and who, upon being directed to leave the meeting by the presiding officer, willfully refuses to leave the meeting, is guilty of a Class II misdemeanor. That said, I declare that we have a quorum. And uh, folks, you have an agenda in front of you. and. We're, I think everybody received the minutes. Yes. Any uh, corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion that the minutes be approved. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. 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 Mm -hmm. Got that, Ms. Hart? I did. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Report from FRL board. We've got three representatives there. Wood, Debbie, Ed, would you? Oh, you want to do librarian's report first? Oh, I, didn't, I should have put my glasses on. I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't mean it. A little bit like chopped liver, but that's okay. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know better than that. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water because I got a lot pretty nice today. And thank you for putting that together for us. That's a My lot pleasure. of stuff. My pleasure. Um, all right. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, hi, my name's Abby Hardison. I'm the Macon County Librarian. And I was going to tell, uh, let our board know, and you guys in attendance, some of the things we have going on. Uh, many of these things we're very proud of. It's some things that we have already done. It's also things that we're currently working on and planning. So um, in October, and this is under the heading of digital inclusion, in October and November, a total of 40 seniors utilized tech time drop-ins with digital navigators here at NCPL. The funding for this program is now exhausted, and the program is officially ended. However, uh, should alternative funding be identified, we are interested in continuing the program in 2024 based on the positive feedback and interest from the community. We have had some folks come in since it ended and they were very disappointed. So uh, we're hoping that we can continue that. Um, so Southwestern Community College extended their computer class for digital literacy on Thursday mornings. Uh, up in, it was going to end on October 12th. They extended it to November 16th due to community interest and participation. Topics such as uh, Facebook Marketplace and how to sell things on Facebook Marketplace. Um, online banking and bill pay were covered. Um, under health, health and Wellness, on Tuesday, November 7th, the Disability Partners Core Services provided a program offering information on referrals, advocacy, independent living skills, and peer counseling for individuals living with physical disabilities. Uh, this event will be held again on December 11th, so please help us spread the word. Uh, Macon County Public Health has partnered with the Macon and Hudson Libraries to offer the Mighty Writers Storybook Challenge for kids in the months of November and December. There's still time to submit. Uh, kids from five to nine are encouraged to create their own storybook on healthy eating or dental hygiene. Kids 10 to 12 are encouraged to create a story about either the importance of mental health or the harms of vaping. Entries will be judged by health department and library staff and the winning storybooks will be included in the library's catalog. And those topics were specifically earmarked by the health department as initiatives and topics that they um, see a need that, that be addressed in, in the community. So. Um, Pisgah Legal and NC Navigators Consortium provided a healthcare open enrollment opportunity on November 15th to assist people in signing up for affordable healthcare insurance. Right now is open enrollment for the healthcare marketplace. Uh, November 28th, the Red Cross blood drive surpassed their goal of 44 units and collected 46 units. So good job. Um, Via Health will continue their monthly mental health course series in 2024. Topics will include anxiety management, substance abuse, building, and building strong relationships through effective communication. Um, I'm really excited about this next one. 
Uh, library staff are currently working on a collaboration with Crawford Senior Center to create a Memory Cafe program series in 2024. So Memory Cafes, uh, this is something I just recently learned about and I felt really passionate about. Um, they provide in individuals living with memory loss and their care partners a special opportunity to socialize, connect, and build relationships and support networks. They have gained popularity nationwide since 2008. The program will combine nostalgic elements and tailored resources. Um, so the Macon County Public Library already has a memory lane collection. It's actually down in the stacks, um, and our staff can show you there's a special little area, uh, a special area of shelving that has this specific collection of materials. And it has books, DVDs, puzzles designed for older adults with reading issues, memory loss, dementia, and who are recovering from a stroke or other illness. The closest memory cafe program in Western North Carolina is in Asheville. So it would be a periodical event where, where people dealing with these issues and their caretakers can come and basically hang out. And they, you, play, you play oldies music, you have nostalgic snacks, and you have uh, books with large print, and puzzles that are uh, large and easy to manipulate, and it's specifically for those individuals dealing with those issues, but also for their caretakers to have a place to come together and build friendships and relationships and social social networks with each other. So I think it's a really beautiful idea. Um, okay, so in your education, the children's staff have been supporting the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten Initiative to encourage childhood literacy. 55 kids are currently participating. We now have two children who have reached this, this wonderful milestone, and another who is very close and should reach it soon. And this uh, initiative is to assist with childhood literacy. Um, some of the most important fundamentals of reading happen before a child even gets to kindergarten. So this is um, a wonderful celebratory thing to happen. So uh, the local history and heritage series of children's programming continues. The Western North Carolina's Mountain Heritage Center provided a program on quilting <coughs> excuse me, in October. November featured several programs featuring local expert Bill Dyer. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. You know what an expert is? It's a dreadful impression. Oh. <laughs> and Elaine Eisenbron from the Nikwazi Initiative, highlighting the extensive history of the Cherokee people in Macon County, including lifestyles, dance, and food. Uh, on December 12th at 6 p.m., Mainspring Conservation Trust will present a special program about fungi. So bring your questions and your curiosity and experience a delightful evening of fungal edification. <laughs> um, so uh, Thursday, December 14th at 3.30, Western Carolina's Mountain Heritage Center will present, uh, will give a presentation on holidays in the Appalachians. Uh, 257 people used the <coughs> library's private study rooms 111 times for educational purposes in October and in November, 247 patrons used the rooms 107 times. Uh, under work and economy, 188 people used our study rooms 144 times for work in October and in November, 161 <coughs> patrons used the room 125 times. Very popular for Zoom meetings. Very popular for that. Um, so in, uh, oh, I'm very excited about this too, you guys. I hope, I'm hoping everyone's gonna help me spread the word about this series because we have two workshops that I'm very excited about. Uh, in January 2024, uh, we'll feature the Money Smart Program Series. This four program series will provide financial literacy education for kids, adults, and seniors. Representatives from Mountain Credit Union will provide the importance of saving for kids 6 to 12. And they're also going to write a program for adults about the process of buying a home. Um, Diane Mahoney from the Franklin Police Department will provide a program on financial scams that prey upon local citizens and how to avoid being a victim. She did tell me that she has seen an uptick in scams specifically against adults and seniors using technology. And she wants to come and tell everyone how to avoid being a victim. So um, I think it's gonna be a really informative and interesting program. Um, so lastly, financial advisor Bill DeWandler will provide an educational workshop on the basics of investing. 
And we are requesting that the folks interested in the home buying and investing workshops to pre-register with us. And you can do that by utilizing the QR code on the flyer or by calling us here at the library and we can register you so that they'll know exactly how many material packets it takes to bring. <coughs> um, under affordable living, 68 people utilized free notary services in October and November at Macon County Public Library and 19 received notary services at Hudson. The Curie Corner has received additional generous donations of food, beverages, and cold weather items such as hats and scarves from several local families and individuals. The youth staff has oh, they collaborated with the MEC students and faculty to host a special event uh, today to collect food for MEC's free little pantry. We still could use some donations for the pantry, y'all. Um, our little wagon is looking like could use, looking a little hungry, could fill it up. Um, the, and they collected letters for Santa's mailbox. Santa made an appearance after a special story time and was available for pictures. Attendees were encouraged to bring non-perishable and canned food items to Joey. And that was today, and it was pretty downright magical. Um, we had a little bit of an issue with a Santa <laughs> appearance, and we had a last minute Santa. It was amazing. It was, it was a Christmas miracle. Um, and uh, one of the kids from MEC just happened to show up wearing a Santa costume, and we were like, how do you feel about being Santa? And he felt great about it, and it was delightful. And we have about 75 people here uh, enjoying cookies and Santa story time and sing-along songs. And uh, Read to Me brought these wonderful take-home packets with reading activities. So it was, on the whole, uh, a down-to-the-wire moment, but it all came out great. So that was lovely. Um, next up, under recreation and leisure, family fun night in October was fall themed and spooky crafts. The last family fun night was November 2nd and featured a puzzle tournament <coughs> and several themed escape rooms, uh, escape room games for kids, teens, and adults. This series of all-age programming got good feedback from participants and staff will utilize that feedback in planning similar programming going forward. Uh, fall into dance, clogging, and Cherokee dance events in October and November were a big hit with the kids and parents and the Arts Council of Macon County is looking at possibilities to continue this series in the spring with other, other kinds of dance. Uh, November 8th, Jackson County author, storyteller, and artist Gary Carden hosted a viewing of his just released documentary and a Q&A session. On December 7th at 3.30, we will host Haunted Holidays in the Appalachians with Mark Muncy of the podcast Eerie Travels. Christmas ghost stories are an old tradition that was popularized in Victorian England by Charles Dickens A Christmas Carol. Muncie brings the tradition to the mountains with this mix of paint tales and history. He is an author of the recently published book, Eerie Appalachia. Saturday, December 9th, the Arts Council will hold the Celtic Christmas Extravaganza. I uh, can tell you guys, registration for that is closed because this place gonna be full. It is got, we have about 200 people I think that they're expecting to come, and it's going to be amazing. Um, and it's going to include music and dance performance, and as I said, community, due to the overwhelming response from the community, registration has been closed. On December 12th, we are, oh, this is delightful too, uh, we are pleased to host, for the love of pie, a workshop on mastering the art of pie making with Ellie Mosello. Interested attendees are asked to sign up at the reference desk or call 524-3600. <coughs> On October 23rd, library staff from all three <coughs> counties participated in a safety and security training. Macon County EMS staff provided basic first aid education and safety, security, harassment, and emergency fire procedures and po policies and procedures were reviewed. Uh, three staff members attended the 2023 NCLA conference and enjoyed informative sessions on reading aids for children, North Carolina digital access initiatives, food literacy, evaluating AI-generated informational content, building community partnerships, and innovative pilot programs providing free virtual high school diploma classes and community gardens. Um, the latest update from Nana Hala, renovation manager Jack Morgan, was on November 21st. The doors were finally received, but were the wrong size. Um, instead of waiting for the originally ordered doors, he will modify the plans to accommodate. He stated that a completion estimate for the end of December was, quote, optimistic. <laughs> I did receive an update today from Commissioner Higdon, who uh, regretfully could not attend today. Um, he did say the war windows and doors were in, and the HVAC broadband, electrical, and plumbing were all being worked on currently. And Mr. Trask may have additional information on that during his report. 
Um, so one of our full-time staff members in youth services did resign, but we are happy to report this position was filled by Aaron Coyne, formerly a part-time employee in our circulation department. So, and his part-time position, <coughs> excuse me, has now also been filled. Uh -huh. <coughs> so this is uh, good news for everyone. Uh, after researching the suggestion of employee background checks, Director Fitzmorris and FRL administration initiated the process utilizing the same company, Safety Works, which the three counties also use. All current employees completed the necessary authorization paperwork, and new hires will undergo the check before the hiring process is complete. The costs associated with the background checks will be paid by the individual libraries under the line item for contracted services. At this time, volunteers will be checked against the National Sex Offender Registry, which is administered by the Department of Justice. The website enables FRL to search the latest information on the identities and location of registered sex offenders from all 50 states, the District of Columbia and principal US territories. I am happy to report that all background checks for current employees have been completed. Within the FRL system, there were eight traffic violations. No other offenses were reported. The updated FRL Safe Child Policy was approved at the November FRL meeting. At this time, all children under the age of 12 must be under supervision while in the library. Children under the age of eight must be under direct supervision, supervision and children nine to 11 <coughs> must have a guardian present in the building. Children 12 and older may be left unattended with the permission of a parent, legal guardian, or caregiver, provided they abide by all aspects of the library's code of conduct policy. Video recordings of FRL regional board meetings from July 2023 onward are now available on the FRL website on the Board of Trustees page. Minutes from those meetings are posted after they receive board approval. An application for appointment to the Macon County Library Board was submitted to the County Commissioners for Marsha Moxley. Moxley is currently the chair of the Hudson Library Board meeting the specific qualifications for the current library board opening. This was included in the commissioner's November meeting agenda and was tabled until the next meeting, December. The county commissioners approved proposed amendments to the FRL regional agreement at their November meeting. These amendments were to be sent to Swain and Jackson County commissioners for review and consideration. Under environmental sustainability, on November 16th, we held a reception for local photographer April McNiff, who specializes in capturing the beauty and importance of Western North Carolina's native wildflowers and plants. On no Wednesday, November 29th, NCPL hosted a workshop with the Nanahala Forest Service Program Coordinator Jillian Watson on the principles of Leave No Trace, which provides an easily understood framework of minimum impact practices for anyone visiting our national natural spaces to preserve and protect them for future generations. On December 12th, biologist Lori Williams will present a special program on hellbender salamanders and the conservation efforts to save this native species. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lawrence, and as always, very concise and very clear. We appreciate that. Trustees, any response or comments? Uh, How about a wow? <laughs> <laughs> I think like you took more than five yeah. breaths this time. <laughs> All right, moving on. Report from FRL board, Mr. Lovell, Ms. Fallon, Mr. Trask. I don't know how y'all were arranged to report, but we're ready. Well, I'll start. Um, Lynn Cody, our finance officer, and um, the lady from the audit firm, at our last meeting and they um, went over all the issues that we had with the audit report. Um, mainly the issues were the staffing transition and the transition of the software. The new software that they use is excellent and they were thrilled to get it and it solved a lot of problems. Um, Excuse me, David, that's accounting software? Yes, accounting software. Um, 
Our total assets for Fontana Regional were increased by about 340,000 and 125,000 increase in cash. So um, they're doing a great job with our budget uh, and the audit was, has now been sent to the state for approval. So we're just waiting on that. Um, Tracy's applied for um, digital champion grant for North Carolina Department of Technology and we can get up to um, $400,000 um, which will be applied to all the libraries. It'll be um, divvied up between them. Should we get it? And I think we'll know in January. End of March. End of March about that. And that grant will basically be to help um, low-income families, um, people where there's a language barrier, and minorities, disabled people, and et cetera like that. Um, Abby went over a couple of the things that I was going to talk about. Um, North Carolina State has added $3.817 million recurring increase to state aid for libraries, and we should receive a portion of that in January, right? Our monthly, um, the monthly checks will be. Yeah, bigger. we'll know. We don't, we don't receive it all in one. No, and we'll know in okay. January. And that's the whole state. Yeah, how much <laughs> we'll be getting of that yeah. bucket. Um, Wood's gonna talk about quite a bit. Um, the safe child policy was passed, as you mentioned. We're gonna talk about code of ethics. Well, you go ahead and say something about the code of ethics. Well, the code of ethics, um, it's standard among libraries, and it's, actually it's been tabled till January when we've had a chance to really look at it and review it. And, um, about accepting it or not. That's all I'm saying. Ed, do you have anything before I say something? No. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I'll add a couple of things that, um, that this board needs to know. Um, for the last couple of years, uh, the library, Seoul Library in um, Swain County is Mariana Black, and they've been, <clears throat> it's an old library and needs a major renovation, and they've been trying to raise the funds to do just that. Uh, at first, I think they wanted, they, they tried to, to have a, um, a brand new building, but funds couldn't be raised for that, so now they're entering the idea of a renovation. That's been going on for a year and a half, and with not much success, but from uh, one, from the last meeting to the, or the, the last meeting to the most current meeting that we had several weeks ago, they've just done very well and they've come up with, their goal is 5.3 million to, to renovate Marianne Black. And uh, what they've broken down, they've got, um, they now have $500,000 from the county, they or a promise, They're, they have uh, $675,000 from individuals and businesses in um, Bryson City. My note said uh, $414,000 from Dogwood. That's correct. That's now what, what is Dogwood, I forget. Dogwood Trust, they, um, they're a from the sale of the hospital. From the sale of the hospital, they have a huge fund to utilize in the community to improve things, and they have they have different focuses um, specifically, but mm -hmm. it's all for the improvement of different folks of the community. Oh, well, that's great! So they've allocated four hundred and fourteen thousand to to uh, uh, upgrade the book. Of the library, that's great, and they've had a commit. They've got a commitment uh, of 3.2 from the state, so all that adds up to about 4.8 million dollars. So, with their goal being 5.3, uh, they're getting pretty close to it, yeah. and they have tons of momentum. And hopefully, in the next couple of months, they'll be able to raise a balance. So, uh, that's that's great news. 
for uh, Fontana that that Swain is is uh, getting up to speed. That's great. The other thing is is that um, we had a quorum last at the last meeting at Fontana, and it probably, as everyone knows, uh, what the libraries have come under fire all over the country. And Western Carolina, our little small area, it's not forgotten, uh, but we've had some issues too. It's been very difficult to, to be a library in, in uh, anywhere, even in our area. So, and it's, it's, it's taken some, some hits, some unfair, some some fair, but the main thing is is that we have a the, the Fontana Regional Board feels that we have an excellent from top to bottom from the executive director of Fontana all the way down to uh, the person who uh, puts the books on the shelves. Uh, every person, I think we've got about 65 employees. 69. 69. We felt that we wanted to uh, let all of these employees <coughs> know that uh, the board of Fontana Regional has has their support, and I'll just read what we all agreed on uh, in a private session on Tuesday, November 14th. The Fontana Regional Library Board unanimously passed a motion of support that fully endorses. The executive director, county librarians, branch librarians, and all of the library staff members. The Fontana Regional Library Board commends the Fontana Regional Executive Director and her staff for their commitment to effectively operate libraries that represent vital resources for our very communities their professionalism and their creative energy that produces a wealth of programming from, for all our constituencies. We thank them for their service through these challenging times for libraries in the United States and assure them that the FRL board supports their efforts to serve our mission of, quote, providing the public of Jackson, Macon, and Swain counties with excellent service and convenient access to resources for their educational, informational, and recreational needs. So that was sent to the uh, <clears throat> uh, to the libraries itself, and they are aware of the total support of the Fontana Regional Library uh, Board. So that was that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have uh, a couple of things. Uh, one, we discussed the collection and development policy. Um, and because of a number of places in this policy that uh, the board was looking at approving at the last meeting, there's numerous um, references to the American Library Association's Library Bill of Rights and its interpretations. Uh, and also um, referring to gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a number of places in this collection development policy. Um, this all comes from the American Library Association, um, which is a Marxist organization. The head of the ALA is a self-avowed Marxist. It's on her website. You know, mm -hmm. And it states specifically that she, when she was elected, her her aim was to move the ALA as far to the left as she possibly could. So
so the collection and development policy was tabled um, because of these items that are in there. Uh, I personally could never support this policy. Um, but so Ed, we did, we did vote to um, move, take the ALA portion out of that during that meeting. So that's going to be taken up by FRL board in mm -hmm. January. Okay. Yeah. And what about the um, further revisions to the request for reconsideration form? What do you think about those? Yeah, basically, by approving this collection development policy, the uh, it basically shuts down the ability of parents and concerned citizens to uh, to challenge any books in the library because the um, you cannot challenge the book the, the forms that they came up with again from the ALA um, and the only the only way you can review the library resources is by telling exactly how the book does not fit in with the collection development policy. Well, the collection development policy is so liberal, um, and anybody can go onto the ALA website, which I did, um, and you can find out their policy, you can find out interpretations of the Library Bill of Rights, uh, how it's, um, just a couple of things. One, um, you, you should not be able to um, put content filters on the internet, internet access. Um, children of any age should be able to get on the internet at the libraries and pull up whatever kind of filth that they want to. Uh, and it takes the it takes the, with this policy, um, you cannot, you cannot stop them. Um, so there, it will be an interesting meeting in January. So all of that's going to be reviewed um, as far as you know? Yeah, as far as I know. There was another thing they, they wanted us to sign this uh, ethics statement. This ethic statement is um, word for word verbatim from the ALA Code of Ethics for Library Trustees. <laughs> and one of the items on here is trustees must distinguish clearly in their actions and statements between their personal philosophies and attitudes and those of the library, acknowledging and supporting the formal position of the board even if they disagree. That's that's an, an affront to my First Amendment rights. Censorship. If, yep. um, if, if, I, if I disagree yeah. with something and vote against it, then I'm certainly not going to be supported. Yeah. That Will that be reviewed also? Is that part of the review? I would, I would make a motion that this board um, mm -hmm. just, just Make a make a uh, an overture to the uh, regional board to review to review, especially that particular item. Okay, we have a motion for that's what we did. That's what we did. It was that's tabled exactly until January, what we did. so there's, there's oh, it's no reason. Done. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah. No, it, has, it has not. It has not. Yeah, it it has. was tabled. This, this yeah. has not been changed. Right, it was tabled so that we can discuss it further in January. The code of ethics specifically. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, however, um, aren't you asking for an overture so that at least we go on record as saying that the, these documents, which are directly from the ALA, which many of us don't support the ALA. I don't know. Is it directly from the ALA? It's yes, exactly. I have it word for word. word, for word. word. It is so, the yes. one that most libraries use, mm -hmm. they, and that is where mm -hmm. it stems from. It's the, um, yeah, 
It's, it's a subdivision. Yeah. 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 That doesn't necessarily mean that it's equal or anything, but we decided. <laughs> <laughs> They're monsters. <laughs> if, if you read, if you read the, the, this code of ethics, there might be. I mean, we all need to agree with it on the on the Fontana board. But um, that's what we decided to do. It came up for discussion, and um, there was an objection uh, by someone, and we said, well, that's a fair point. Let's, let's table it, and we'll talk about it uh, at our next meeting. So if we're going to, um, I mean, this is what you want done is already in the process and that'll be on the agenda for, I mean, it already is on the agenda for the next meeting. So uh, if we're gonna make a motion to, for the, to ask the Fontana Regional Board to go over this and review it and make a decision what we wanna add, delete, or keep, that's already been done. This, so, this is an advisory board, would it? And we should be able to advise our feelings regarding some of these these forms that they want the, the library, the FRL to include. Right, and so, we, so we should be able to voice our input to mm -hmm. the region board. So Ed, Ed, all of us are not on the region board. Let's check. Ed's made a motion. You want us to restate that, please? Uh, that we we would like the um, this particular form and this particular um, item where uh, we are acknowledging and supporting the formal position of the board even if we disagree. That's, that's clearly Marxist. Okay. And we so we have a motion and I understand the motion. Uh, one comment is we don't, he doesn't understand the motion so what well, don't you understand about it? Well, you, you take well, a, let, let's go ahead and get a second so we can have a discussion. Is there a second to Ed's motion for those that have understood it? Yes, second. Yes. Second, yes. okay. Ms. Cavill, second. Okay. Okay, now, discussion. Ed, you want to explain what you don't understand about it? Well, Ed has taken I think there are 10, 11, or 12, whatever it is, and he's taken one, uh, one item out of this and he objects to it. That was discussed at the meeting. We, a lot of us thought that that had some merit, didn't vote on it, so we didn't know. So we said, you know what, maybe it's, it's better that we all read this and think about it some more and come back and vote on, talk about it and then vote on whether we want to add anything to the code of ethics, whether we want to delete anything. But in any event, uh, that's what we decided. And it seems to me that if, uh, if this board wants to um, uh, make certain or recommend that the, the board, the Fontana Regional Board, review this, um, I would say that's fine because we were gonna do it anyway. But it, is there anything more? Um, I, be, I believe what was tabled specific was the collection and development policy, not this form and not this that work. Was that was tabled. That was tabled. Was tabled. Yeah. I think it was tabled. It was tabled. If we clarified the motion, perhaps, to state that we want it to be scrutinized and revised so that no trustees' First Amendment rights are trampled, I think that would be a better mm -hmm. revision to exactly. scrutinize it thoroughly, not just that one statement, that First Amendment rights would not be suppressed. When we look at the ALA's um, Bill of Rights, it says, um, clearly that um, no abridgment of free speech. So if that's for patrons and if that's for, um, for minors, then that should be for trustees as well. Mm -hmm. So possibly 
Would you restate yeah. how you see think that should be? Before we well, do that, okay, well. do, do you want, do you want to withdraw your second and you withdraw your motion from, to have a substitute motion made? If we like it. <laughs> if we like the substitute. Well, if we draw, we draw first. Okay, we can't yes. put the substitute okay. until we withdraw. Well, no, that's fine. Right. That's fine. We're in agreement. Okay, so. so does we, oh, could we revise that motion? Could I make a motion for, and make a motion instead to scrutinize and revise the proposed collect, um, code of ethics mm -hmm. so that uh, trustees' First Amendment rights are not suppressed? That's your motion. It's my motion. Okay. <coughs> can you can you repeat it for me? Scrutinize and revise. Scrutinize and revise, scrutinize and revise <laughs> the code of ethics proposed document so that trustees' First Amendment rights are not suppressed. Got it. Second. Did you make the motion? What? Have you got it, Ms. Harris? Scrutinize and revise the code of ethics proposed document so that trustees' okay. First Amendment rights are not suppressed. That good? Correct. You want to, you did second it, Ms. Gatton? Yes, I did. Wait, who, who was first? I am. And you said yes. Ms. Okay, so. So we've got a motion and a second. Further discussion? I'd like to bring up something. I have in front of me, and I assume it's the most current, library advisory board members, job description, and job duties. This is from Fontana Regional Library from 2018. Um, I don't know if there's a more current one, but uh, in that set of job duties, it states, so this is not new, that uh, library advisory board members should publicly support and uphold all policies or rules adopted by the governing board. So this is not new, wild, crazy stuff. This is something that we have been under for a long time, and it certainly isn't any different than any job I ever held where you can disagree amongst yourself all you want when you're making decisions about how to move forward in a, in a position, in a job, in whatever um, organization it is. But then once a decision is made, I don't go out and, as a public health nurse, for example, and say, oh, I don't believe in vaccinations. Don't bring your kids in to get vaccinated. No, we we gave vaccines. We believe in vaccines, and millions of children in the last hundred years have been, um, you know, prevented from becoming very ill or dying because of vaccines. So it's this is not an unusual kind of a policy to say if you're on a board or if you're an employee, you need to uphold what decisions the employer or the board has decided on. I, I don't think it's... Um, Ma'am, yes. the difference is the FRL, Ed has been on this for six years, I think. He um, is has stood alone for six years. If you've tabled it at an FRL meeting, and he brings up that he would like, he, it was a miracle that um, he would seconded this, this so he could at least read the document. It was so odd that y'all just threw out the document, which people in the public have no ability to read because you don't hand out the other documents. Any of us would have seen that this is a problem. Um, and the fact that it is verbatim what the ALA um, statement is, is, is troublesome. Because I think what we in this country have learned is that the ALA does not align itself with some of the family values that are in our community. And we, and we are supposed to be supporting our community. So let's say, fast forward, you take it back to the FRL meeting in January, whenever it is, and, and you take it up. Ed will be there, and he will be one vote. And as was happened when I challenged um, that trashy book. You can't even have a vote if somebody doesn't second it. Would this is the first time I've seen someone actually realize maybe we need to discuss this. Maybe um, Ed has a good point because it is improper in our country to squash the ability to speak your mind. And if he has, and he's been on this group for six years, 
and apparently, we haven't been around for those six years, but apparently he has never been able to represent his, his mores because he's in the minority. So I think if we, which we would like to do, um, can offer an opinion as the advisory board that surely you would like to consider people's First Amendment rights before you just sign this and expect everybody to do it. I think that's only fair. Yeah, yeah. that's Amen. the purpose of an advisory board, is to advise, give our opinion. Well, <coughs> may I add that we looked at the Code of Ethics, we had time to review it, I think it's 10 or 11, very Six, obvious seven. thoughts. And Ed raised that, and I think he made a cogent comment. He said, you know what, maybe we ought to look at this. That's whatever number that is. Five. Number five, and we, we read it, reread it, and thought about it, and um, it was seconded that, you know what, maybe we need to think about this a little bit more. We took a vote and it was unanimous. Everybody agreed that we should not sign it at that time. So, uh, and just wait so that we have two months to let it, let us think about it more and come back. And there may be other issues that we want to um, think about, or maybe we want to delete or whatever. But the point is, when it was seconded, we took a vote and it was unanimous, the whole board. So Ed's not out there in the wilderness by himself. The whole board said, yeah, maybe we need to think about it. So let's be clear that, that Ed was not alone in, in challenging that, and it, it, made, it made sense. Let's just, we're not gonna vote on it. We're gonna decide whether these code of ethics are good for Fontana, and that's what it was. No. And not, am I right about that's, that? That's correct. Okay. We were there. We were there. Okay. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Would, does the Fontana Board already sign some sort of statement annually that's sort of an ethical? Yes. No. no, this is the first time. This is the first time you've introduced the mm -hmm. Code of Ethics. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, this is new. Right. It's, it's an ancient document. <laughs> now, but I thought once a year, maybe in. Um, Are you referring, you referring to um, the um, conflict of interest? Conflict of interest. That's what we saw. I think yeah, so. that's that's not yes, saying. Yeah. And is that does that say trustees shall not use their position to gain unwarranted privileges or advantages for themselves or others? That's like that. yeah. Yeah. Clearly, it does. Yeah, that's yeah. what the library. Yeah. So we're we're making something, and we need to move on, but. I, I want everybody to know that this was discussed and we're going to go back and probably look at every one of those code of ethics to see whether it makes sense for Fontana. Not necessarily the New York libraries or Seattle libraries, but for Fontana. So what Ed is objecting to is there's no need to object because his request to, to table this was heard and agreed on by all the board. Well, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. But I, I think that the main, the issue here for Ed is that it was unanimously supported by all and voted to be tabled, but one person out of the 12 was the one that challenged it to begin with. So I think that Ed is looking for support from this advisory board in saying that we also do stand with the people who would like who disagree with this. I think that's at the, the heart of it. Not that it needs to be challenged because it already is being challenged, but the fact that this board supports that decision as well, so that he has our support as yeah, an advisory board. That's a little bit different than what we've been talking about. Yeah, but I think but that's if, kind of at the yeah, heart of it. Bill, if, if this board uh, wants to argue that. Well, any further comment? We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hardison, would you read the motion again, please? <coughs> the motion is to scrutinize and revise the Code of Ethics proposed document so that the trustees' First Amendment rights are not suppressed. Okay. Does everybody understand the motion? Mm -hmm. 
Any further comment? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Motion passed. And it's, I don't know who needs to carry this on to the FRO board. It should it be our reps or Ms. Fitzmaurice? I think it should be it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, can you give a copy of that and communicate it for us? Thank you. Well, <laughs> well, have a backup. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You'll okay. we'll, we'll take it right away. Okay. Thank you. Um, this document was 2012. That's when the, the same thing y'all are signing. It's mm -hmm. been uh, it's it's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that it hasn't hit this before. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other report from the FRL board members? Anything else? Ed, you got anything else? I have a question for the FRL board members. Is there an ad hoc committee working on the collection development policy? No. Was there one last year? Mm -hmm. We all. Yes, there was last December. Yeah, it seems to be a major re uh, overhaul again. We're, it's tabled right now. We're looking at it and comparing it. And we've already, like we discussed, um, took out the ALA information. Um, we're all reading it. And let, me, let me correct that statement. We agreed to look at it to take out the references to the ALA. ALA. <clears throat> the whole statement is basically ALA. Mm -hmm. But we haven't really made that decision. There's no way of how many of them. But there may be. Uh, to have a further review of it uh, at the meeting, that's possible. Is it maybe even likely? It, it was the table. It's it's a new thing. It, was, it wasn't. It was, it, it was it was agreed to to hold off on yeah. any any changes or revisions. So will that be on the agenda? Yes. Okay. And both of these things will be Saturday. Another question. So. Um, did the Macon Board provide input to the collection development policy last December? Yes, we did. There was one person from each county. Right, but was it discussed in the meeting? Did no, you it send was any not. overtures and that sort of thing? It was just the three members. Well, they, they said it. Um, after, we, after we came up with it, we um, <coughs> put it out there for the Fontana Regional Board to approve or to make any changes or to discuss. It, it was sent out to yeah. all, the, all the board members yes. prior to the meeting. Yes. In September of yeah. last year. Mm -hmm. Whenever it was. Mm -hmm. So how long has it been under consideration? Approximately. Um, <coughs> the board saw it at the September 12th meeting, the FRL board tabled it because it was just a review mm -hmm. at the November meeting it was tabled until January. Okay. Was it the September meeting did not have a quorum? Correct. Yeah, but it was sent out to So everything at the September meeting was tabled? Yes. Mm -hmm. Essentially. Okay. Those two items were. Mm -hmm. Those well two everything items. pretty much. You everything. Couldn't, we couldn't vote. Yeah. Everything. Anything but else sorry. with FRL? But we, as an advisory board, we we can make suggestions, just as Ed has done. Um, since it's a major revision, I've looked over the major revisions, and it seems that the revisions err on the side of silencing patrons rather than listening to patrons. I think that's been part of the problem the last year, at least, especially since Dr. Hove, the First Amendment pro bono attorney, has come on board. As a First Amendment attorney, his first order of business was silencing public, public, public comment. Right. Um, well, that was actually in our bylaws. I, I know that's been stated before, but still there wasn't a vote from the governing board. Um, so considering that, I would like to propose um, um, to the Fontana board, um, and, and I would, I'd like to send an overture to the Fontana board, um, and to have them consider. Is this a motion? I'm getting to the motion. Okay, yes, yes, sorry. Yes. 
I would like to propose that the Fontana Board adopt the following statement as part of their newly revised collection development policy in an effort to bring clarity and unity on this issue. The issue being um, there's been an intense interest and at times misunderstanding from the public concerning the perceived attempt by some patrons to ban and censor books. This proposed statement, quote, the library will neither promote nor censor any particular religious, moral, philosophical, or political conviction or opinion. This type of statement ensures that the library will remain politically and socially neutral, which should move towards bringing harmony to our community because so far the library has not issued this type of statement. This statement also supports the amendments to the FRL contract, which our county commissioners unanimously approved on November 14th. Uh, this seems to be a unifying statement. Um, therefore, yes, I would like to make a motion that we send an overture to the Fontana Board to include this statement, which is, quote, the library will neither promote nor censor any particular religious, moral, philosophical, or political conviction or opinion. And I have a copy here for you to look at of the statement. Okay. Notice you did include social, even though in the next sentence you've got such a statement ensures the library will remain politically and socially neutral, but you didn't include that could be added as well. Just, just seem like a right. right. That that is the the language in the um, FRL contract, which has been approved by the commissioners to remain politically and socially neutral. Could you read that again a little louder? Mm -hmm. Yes, the library will neither promote nor censor any particular religious, moral, philosophical, or political conviction or opinion. I think that's a unifying statement as far as what's been going on the last several years. Mm -hmm. The library won't promote or censor any particular ideology. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you send that to the FRL email so that yes, they get, you know. Yes, well, I, I'm perfect. making a formal okay. motion. So I'll second that motion. The, the motion is what's in bold? Yes, that statement. Okay. Yes. Further discussion? Again, I would say to include socially since, it, as you said, it was both in what mm -hmm. the commissioners mm -hmm. approved and in the next statement saying that it would ensure the library remains politically and socially neutral. Right, so a political or social conviction or opinion. So that could be added as so well. So you're amending, you're amending. I did, yes, I did add. I, I, I couldn't hear exactly what was said. What was added? Yes. Or political or social conviction or opinion. So we're just adding Did or social after political or, mm -hmm. or political mm -hmm. or social conviction mm -hmm. or opinion. Can you read that That's once more? Catherine, you got that. In its completion. Yes. yes you get that. The library, <clears throat> the library will neither promote nor censor any particular religious, moral, philosophical, or political, or social conviction or opinion. Be socially neutral. No, we didn't say So we take out an or. <laughs> we take out an or and add, and add, and and add uh, social. So it now reads, the library will neither promote nor censor any particular religious, moral, philosophical, political, or social conviction or opinion. Yes. You got that? Yes. yes. Ms. Hardison, you got it? I got it. So, Lee, are you asking the... Wait a second. We got a motion. We need a second. Sort of second. Second. Okay. Go ahead. Discussion. So, just to be clear, um, are you asking uh, Fontana to put this particular sentence into the collection development policy? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's your your. This is a recommendation. A recommendation for the FR. Okay. No other discussion. Comments. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion passed. I don't, did they, did they, we were talking. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just to be careful here. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Unanimously. That too. <laughs> All right, anything else about FRL? One other item that we did not discuss that was handed out previously uh, about the new uh, item that was signed by our governor. That, Ed, excuse me for interrupting you, that was included in our package. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. protect children from sexual and occult propaganda while still upholding the First Amendment. And it states basically in this legislation, it shall be unlawful for any person, firm person, 18 years of age or older, or corporations who knowing and intentionally create, create, buy, procure, or possess obscene material with the purpose and intent of disseminating it unlawfully. It shall be unlawful for a person, um, corporation, et cetera, et cetera, to hope, hope, to hope, hold out by said person, uh, corporation, as obscene violation of any person who knowingly violates this section in the presence of a minor under 18 years of age shall be guilt of, guilty of a class H felony. Okay. That, we'll go back to that on the submission of public comments, but uh, if everybody's agreeable, mm -hmm. we'll just move on from there. Hudson Library Report. Um, <coughs> interest of time, I would just say that the last couple of my, uh, last year and a half, the Hudson Board has decided that the uh, Hudson Library needs uh, a major upgrade, uh, as well as we've got a small area in the back, you might remember from my last meeting, and we've decided to uh, do some landscape work in there uh, behind it. So we have um, engaged the services of a, uh, a really good landscape architect and he's now drawing the plans for the outside and as far as the inside um, we're moving it's a little bit slowly but we're moving to to uh, really upgrade and make some changes in the library that i think is really going to be a, a, a plus we figured that we've got to raise about a million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars um, we've, got, we've got some funds in our uh, savings uh, that's maybe a third of that, but we're probably going to raise 100% of that this summer and through the fall of next year. But we're moving ahead with our, because the, um, the, the landscape work on the outside is much smaller, maybe around 250000 and we can get going on that right now have a copy of that. Yeah, I don't know if y'all remember receiving mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're saying you're, you're you're paying for another drawing or or is that the same drawing? I thought you just said um, you're, there, you're Well, we're now honing getting priced the the landscape architect who drew this. Uh -huh. We've given him the authority to go ahead and and really make specifics and start getting prices on it. So and it was like a rendering. So things are going to slow down a little bit in the, in the winter time, but um, we're making slow progress with that. Huh? I 
so maybe you can get yeah, a document. Yeah, we're looking for grants right now to help us. Okay, thank you for that report. Any, anything else? That's, yeah. Okay, moving on to old business. Nanahala Community Library facility, Ms. Hardison gave a snippet of that. Uh, Ed, you got more than a snippet to share with us? I do. Um, good news and bad news. Good news, the doors and the windows have been received. The opening, since the doors were the wrong size, was made bigger so that the doors would fit in there. So the doors and the windows are there. The bad news is somebody stole the air conditioning unit. Oh. So, and it's amazing because those doors and windows were just sitting outside, just lean, leaning up against the wall for weeks. Nobody touched them. But evidently, somebody was interested in the air conditioning unit. Mm -hmm. so. That or the copper in the yeah, I was going to say. Is that covered by insurance? <laughs> you don't know. It's county. It's county. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I was. We, we we did receive not a not a nice picture like that <laughs> wood was showing. Um, this is a. <coughs> Kind of what would be seen oh. as far as a floor plan. <laughs> looks, like it was, looks, looks like it was drawn by a third grader. <laughs> uh, I think I think we got it from Bill. Later, so we um, Sharon kind of up, upgraded that and made it a much better picture. Um, have you seen that? Andy? I am. Um, so basically there's, there's in two corners, one corner is a room being made for the computer equipment and so on. Um, in the other corner, uh, there will be a room such as the public rooms here. Uh, we only need one. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah. uh, and there's um, a computer uh, table, long table, and that's where the computers will Thank go. Thank you, Tracy. And uh, over in the other corner is the reception desk and so on, as well as a kitchen. Now, reasonable people might say, why do we need two kitchens in this little building? Because we have a community club that wants to use their end of the building and have a kitchen and not allow the library end of the building to use their kitchen. So if that's, if that's not the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but the thing is the library has public um, programs um, all during the month where they need uh, to utilize the uh, kitchens and so on. All, all this kitchen gives us is a room for a refrigerator. So I guess what the library will have to do is reserve that end of the building on certain days that the library, which is public, uh, public programs, uh, to utilize. So it's, so it's you know, it makes no sense, but that's, <coughs> that's the way it is. That's not okay. uh, that's, that's all. That is. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. Sorry the <laughs> dynamics are not in my field. Uh, any other old business? Hearing none, moving on to new business, we've already, I think if I counted correctly, there were 14 public comments submitted in writing. Uh, everybody received those. Ed's already commented on one of the items. Any any other comments or responses? I just wanted to comment that many comments were praising you, Abby, for your excellent work, and I just yeah. want to add my thank you for all your hard work, and we also appreciate you keeping the library politically and socially neutral in the last year. I, 
I give all the credit to my wonderful staff. They are fantastic. They're, they're very good. Certainly echo that. that. Um, anything else about the comments? <coughs> uh, excuse me. Approval of the meeting schedule for 2024. Did everybody receive that? Yes. Okay. Any, <coughs> any uh, response? Comments? I have a response. Yes, ma'am. Um, there four meetings over here, only one in Highlands. I love that windy road, but wouldn't it be nice if we had at least two in Highlands? Could we do that? And hopefully, like the ones when it gets dark early, I have a driver, <laughs> but I can't see it to drive at night. So it would be so nice if one of them, another one was over there. It's, a, yeah. it's tricky. That's a tough road. It is. It is. We only have six meetings a year, so. So I'm only asking for one extra one in Highlands. That makes you two, because there are there are four that are here in, in Franklin, and I love you all so much, but it's hard all the time to get here. So if maybe that um, that Tuesday. Um, December 3rd meeting could be in Highlands. That would just make me so happy. It was hard as soon as that. That's something. Y'all decision. Yeah, that's our decision. And we, I'm going to act, I'm going to think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you, you drafted that, so I wonder if we need to have a motion or you just as administrator. I, we need a motion. Okay. Um, so I'd like to, it's, okay. Why don't we do the oh, wow. October instead? And that way you'll have two in a row. Well, December. We're saying when it's dark. Oh, okay. It's, I think we'll miss that. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, less dark than October. It'll be less dark. I wonder, I wonder yeah. When, yeah. when you start the construction in Bryson City, is that, is that really going to be the ability to have meetings at that lot? No. They're doing it um, sectionally. So, so the motion, motion not skipped. yes, please. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that the Tuesday, October first meeting be changed to Hudson in in Highlands and changed from Franklin, so that it's more fun. You want a second? Yes. I'll second. December. Second. Uh, someone that travels to Highlands on <laughs> every day. <laughs> the last 12 years, so I'm <laughs> Marty up there. So what's the problem? <laughs> I didn't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have a motion to the second. Any further discussion about the schedule? That. Which? which I, I picked the October one. Okay. Yeah, that's an obvious time to drive. Everybody. <laughs> That's right, you get to see the leaves. Everybody got the motion and the date. Mm -hmm. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Justin, you weren't going to oppose that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay quiet. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's reasonable. Upcoming opening on the NCPL board. Um, if my information is right, in the last, um, I don't know if y'all have a copy of the Macon County Public Library Board of Trustees. This was revised 3A22, so it, it need, I guess it needs to be upgraded because there are people on here that have been replaced. But according to my understanding, Ed, your term expires. You've had two three-year term, excuse me, terms on February the 9th, 2024. Is that your understanding? So do we need to notify the commissioners of this? 
Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what the procedure is at this point. What we need to do next. Ed's aware of it, and that he will be finishing his second term. Mm -hmm. So. There was something in this information you wrote about that. that yeah, it was Marsha Moxley. Marsha yes. Moxley, yes. yes. Well, Marsha Moxley is to replace the other time. She's replacing oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Mar Marsha is replacing um, Bill Trotter. Right. Who, right. His, he resigned right. on August 4th. Yes, yeah. So that's his that's, replacement. Yeah, that's his replacement. That's that's the replacement yeah. for Ed also has mm -hmm. to be done. And I guess mm -hmm. while we're talking about it, Woods, I think it's your second term, if I'm correct. His expires July the 13th. So, from making so, mm -hmm. Yeah, from up for the mm -hmm. this board. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at two mm -hmm. replacements in the next six months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Wood's replacement would also have to come from the Hudson board. Right. Yeah, Ed's replacement, we don't have a specific, Nana Hala doesn't have a board. Um, the question would be, and and is, you know, Ed's re the person filling as replacement ideally would be we someone from that community that would be able to represent the area. I'm not in agreement with that. I, I hope, hope yeah. we yes. do it. It's yeah. not formal, but yeah. mm -hmm. did y'all catch what we were saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've talked to a couple of people from Manahela, uh, and uh, we try to get a firm commitment from them as to whether they can rest. Can, have, did you give them instructions about how to apply mm -hmm. or, and the process? Okay, so they, they're aware of that. Well, thank you for doing that, Ed. That's, that's good. Mm -hmm. and, and recruiting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else about the upcoming replacement for Ed? Wood, is your, are your folks aware of? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Board of Trustees offers officer elections. Uh, <coughs> Bill, I hope you're going to run again. Pardon? Me? Can I nominate you again? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, if y'all would just take one of these. Um, invariably, even with our best intentions and Effort. It seems like the officer elections uh, and the process kind of slips up on us every year, and we're kind of scrambling. And this is an effort to get everybody uh, moving together. And I, I, there's no need to read this whole thing, but it, it's it's basically a timeline. It says officers of Macon County Public Library Board of Trustees shall be chosen annually at the regular June meeting. They shall be chairman and vice chairman slash secretary. So what I would like for each of you to do is consider being on, if you would like to be on the nomination committee, it's an ad hoc committee, that you could have couple of months to think about it and if you would come back at our December meeting uh, February. Yeah, February. February. I'm sorry at our February meeting ready to step up and volunteer or be drafted, uh, or or be drafted. drafted. <laughs> so anyway th this is just a timeline there's no need to spend a lot of time on it but just so we can process this together and move together on it. That's all that is. Any questions or comments about it? Uh, I hope you will consider. Uh, any other new business? Yeah, I have one thing, and so if everyone just seconds it and eyes it, then we can get out of here quickly. Um, I didn't realize we were going to be talking about so many overtures today, but I'd like to open a discussion regarding our library board sending an overture or a statement of good faith to the Fontana Regional Library Board regarding the newly amended FRL contract. Can we discuss that momentarily? I'll get to the motion in a second. We have the commissioners that... Yes. Is that, that's yeah, gone, that contract. That's yeah. gone to Swain and... Yes. They're, they're yeah. like regarding that, yeah. Sure. So, um, as many of y'all know, we're at year 10 
and it's time for the contract renewal. Um, these three counties are the ones who fund the FRL. Um, the last few years, we all already referenced this, uh, have been fraught with uh, controversy and divisiveness. Um, my concern is that if the FRL resists um, the newly amended contract, it will just go to further show um, potentially an unwillingness to compromise and an unwillingness to have accountability from the governmental bodies that, uh, that funds them. Um, essentially, our democratically elected commissioners voted unanimously to approve this newly amended contract. So I think it would go a long ways in showing unity, which we have been severely lacking, uh, with our governmental representatives and the community at large. Uh, also, it's worth noting, um, for those who have seen the contract, that no single group of citizens are getting um, everything that they desired with uh, recent uh, submitted public comments. Um, no one is getting everything that they want in this new contract uh, that's been made by the county attorneys. Uh, there are positives for both, uh, for those on both sides of the aisle, and I believe that that's a, a win for everybody involved. Um, in summary, I believe it would be a helpful show of unity in these times for us as a board to send an overture of good faith to the FRL Board of Trustees to encourage them to receive the new contract as it stands and work diligently to abide by it for the next 10, hopefully more peaceful years. And I wrote down the motion and the overture verbatim if you'd like me to here, here. read that to add me. Mm -hmm. um, essentially it would say... Uh, are, are you doing the motion? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, men and women of the Fontana Regional Library Board the Macon County Public Library Board of Trustees would like to send this overture or sign of good faith to you in support of the new Fontana Regional Library contract. With all the turmoil over the last few years regarding a variety of different issues, we believe that the approval and acceptance of this newly amended contract will do much in the way of promoting unity and community. Issue after issue has been brought up and has caused a rift in our community. This contract does a good job of meeting the demands of both sides of the aisle. We're seeking to show our support of the commissioners of our county, as well as the Fontana Regional Library itself, by sending this sign of good faith to you. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, Macon County Public Library Board of Trustees. So all of that was the motion? <laughs> yeah. Okay. For them to receive. Right. Yes. And I'll second that mission. It's going to be good a lot easier. Oh, you just take myself. it. Just take it. Here. Thanks. I'll email it to take others it. as well if you want to. I'm still trying to absorb all of it. I'm aware of yeah. what they. they uh, you should hear him preach. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to. You need to. <laughs> yeah. So the motion is to send an overture to the FRO, supporting, what the, supporting what the commissioners did and supporting them in their decision to also support the commissioners, right? Okay. Yeah, but I just so basically expanded that. There oh. are parts of that um, contract that I, I agree with and there are some that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. So I can't vote for that, I'm sorry. And, and, and to me it sounds, uh, it, it sounds a lot more harsh than it really is. Yes, there have been some disagreements, but I would go on record and say that um, that the, the, the tenet of that of that motion, Justin, is probably more harsh than what I would agree with. I mean, there's been some disagreement, but if we're just talking about that we want um, that the Macon County Library Board wants to go on record that we uh, want to try and keep the harmony and just, I don't know, I just, um, we can always vote on it and, and decide. Well, it's gotten to the point where we've s suspended the public comment at meetings like this. Mm -hmm. So that seems like a sign of things aren't going, uh, jiving really well with the public and with the boards right now. 
And all I'm wanting to do with this is to say that we as a board um, support the decision of our governing body of county commissioners. No. Yep. No. That's essentially what I'm saying. Mr. Dye, may I just say that the commissioners have not said that to the Fontana Regional Board. So they have not. I know some people have seen it because they were at the meeting, but it has no, it hasn't been sent to the board. Okay. So they have not received it yet from the commissioners. Okay. And I might if we're in discussion here. Um, one of my concerns is you're talking about unity and I'm all for unity, but I don't think the commissioners developing a new contract without even discussing it with or getting input from <coughs> the Fontana Regional Board shows signs of unity. So I don't know how we can support this in saying that we want to have unity if we're not including people in the decision making. Commissioners don't have to. I'm sorry, no interruptions, please. Thank you. I mean, without seeing it, I understand what you're doing, Justin, but without seeing it, I don't know. We don't know what it says. That's public knowledge. Yeah, I mean, it's right. It hasn't been shared from the commissioners to the Fontana Regional Library Board. It's in the newspapers. It's in the newspapers. But nothing has been sent to them officially. Nothing has been sent officially. And I will email Mr. Rowland, or would you email Mr. Rowland and have him do that? Email, have him email the document to the FRL board. Yeah. Board. Okay. So we have to call for the question. We call for the question. We have a motion now second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion passes. Any, for, uh, any other business? Hearing none. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.